Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. This is Doran Aldana, your host, coming at you from MortgageMarketingCoach.com. And today we have a very special guest with the one, the only, Jessica <laughs> Swiston. And uh, she literally doubled her business, doubled her production in just three months, which is a monumental task to say the least for the average person in this business to do in a year, let alone in three months. So obviously something very special happened. Something came together, a variety of different factors that came together in the culmination of an avalanche of awesome. And so we're going to talk about her story today, have her unpack what happened, what made the difference, what was the difference that made the difference. And my intention is that you take a few pearls, a few threads of gold from this interview that you can apply in your life, in your business, to create a breakthrough in your production, in your income, and to propel you to your dreams and goals faster than you ever before thought possible. So without further ado, thanks for hanging with us today, Jess. I'm super stoked to have you. <laughs> yes, no problem. Awesome. So why don't we start off with just getting to know you a little bit. Um, what inspired you to get in the business, into this crazy mortgage business, and how long you've been in, and just maybe a little bit about your background on what got you into the business? Yeah, um, so I've been in this business, I think, 14 years now. Um, I came right out of college, and I started working for um, a large financial institution. <laughs> and. <All right. laughs> um, you know, I started as a personal banker selling checking accounts and credit cards, and I used to always get in trouble because I wouldn't sell the checking accounts and the credit cards. I was always selling home loans. Um, right. So actually, they created a spot for me and a couple other um, personal bankers in that market. And I, I work in the Seattle Bellevue market. I always have been here. Um, anyway, and so I started in this business sitting in a really, really busy banking center. And I used to literally just to be funny, almost drag my desk out into the middle of the lobby and sit there and um, clients would just walk in the door and I could take a loan application back in those days in five minutes and punch out a pre-approval letter in about 10. Nice. And it was just a revolving door of business, right? So you didn't really ever have to work on um, attracting clients or um, even uh, really a lot of customer satisfaction because there was just so many clients coming in and going out. Um, anyway, so that's how I started. And so I, I learned the mortgage piece and I know all the, all the parts of the mortgage business and how to get loans closed. And if there was a problem, I have seen it and lived through it, right? Right. Um, but it was about, I worked there for about eight years and then I left. And it's a whole new world is going out into um, into the into the great unknown and meeting new clients, developing relationships and getting all of your business through referral. And right. it's a totally different animal. It has nothing to do with how to how to process a loan. I know how to do that. Right. But right. Um, it took a while to figure out how to get and start those relationships and gain the new business and keep it and manage that database and manage those relationships. Um, so I've been out of the banking center for a while now, maybe six years, seven. And um, I brought with me a lot of clients and I brought with me some relationships. It's hard to maintain a lot of re realtor relationships from that environment because there's no loyalty there. It's just a turn. Right. right. Yeah. Um, and so, and I've and I've been well. I've, I've done well. I've been really blessed to have some great agents that I've worked with and great clients. And I still, honestly, I probably still get pinged once a month from a client that I did a loan for way back when, right? And they're like, "I remember mm -hmm. you." And gosh, I just, you know, I'm buying my third house or I'm refinancing, and they will find me on the internet, look me up, and those are some of the greatest pieces of my business. And I've really, I've always had the luxury of just getting that business and having that repeat business but it was kind of um last year where i started saying you know i think there's more i think i could step this up to the next level i certainly know how to do this job but i really mm -hmm. needed some inspiration on how to take it to that next level of production and get 
um, a lot more business, double, triple, quadruple the business, gain more referrals, more agents, more followers, more clients. And um, yeah. So That's coming from the banking world, yeah. you're intimately acquainted moving <laughs> from that to on the front lines of capitalism, you eat what you kill, 100% commission. Yeah. The transition from going as a um, wild animal that got put in the zoo that now is waiting for food to be, get thrown over the fence and just taking any walk-ins that come your way, anybody who comes in, you basically will take care of, but you didn't have to go out and hunt for business. You were just getting meat thrown over the fence. Yeah, and then walked in a revolving door, yes. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you say, screw this, I'm not gonna just settle for this. There's a bigger, better life on the other side of this fence. So you took the plunge. I'm sure if you're like most mortgage professionals, it was scary and exciting at the same time, but you took the plunge. All of a sudden you realize life is very different and there's a whole new realm of skill set required to thrive, uh, survive and let alone thrive on the other side of that fence when you have to eat what you kill and you have to hunt and actually drum up business yourself as opposed to just having stuff thrown over the fence to you every day. And so that created a, a whole new set of challenges you didn't have in the banking world. Tell us about that. Tell us about um, the most painful struggles, challenges, frustrations that you struggled with on a daily basis with um, when you took that plunge and you realized that uh, just because you're great at getting loans done, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're great at bringing the loans in. Tell us about that part of your journey. Yeah. So when I left, um, I don't know, do people mention large large financial institution or should we just leave it there so yeah we we can surmise the <laughs> one two or three that are coming to mind just right. by insinuation yeah. well, the, right? the biggest one, <laughs> that's where i was right and i left and at the time um i believe that the close on time ratio there was 40 percent so 40 percent incredible right, so right? Had 100 loans closing 60 calls were going to have to be made to clients and agents saying, ha, just kidding. We're not going to close this on time. Right? Sucks to be you. Right. Sucks yeah. To be you. And um, so when I got out of that, when I got out of that, um, what the number one thing was, was as soon as I got my hands on any agent, um, right, purchase agent or the selling agent, um, make friends with them. And actually the very first transaction I did at Movement, my new company, I remember calling the listing agent and introducing myself and she was so mad. She goes, who are you? I've never heard of this company. And she goes, I thought we were working with, you know, this lender at this. And I go, well, that's me. I moved. And she, she was so <laughs> mad. Um, anyway, she goes, I just don't think you can do anything you said you could do. And um, there's no way you can close this loan in 10 days. And she was, I mean, not nice. Right. And um, I did close the loan in 10 days nice. <laughs> and the client was really happy. And it was the first loan that I had done in a long time where I didn't end up sitting on the sitting under my desk and sucking my thumb because I wasn't sure how we were going to get it closed on time. Right. And Novel experience. She, you, and it really was. It really <laughs> was. And I remember there was some hiccups on the file and I called the underwriting team directly and spoke with the underwriter and they just cleared it up. Anyway, long story short, um, that agent and I are still good friends. And um, it's been all this time, was first agent I did a transaction with. And I think that one experience kind of showed up on purpose in my journey is like, this is how you do it. You make friends with each agent one at a time and you don't mm -hmm. drop the ball. Mm -hmm. um, and so, it, but it was scary and you, you know, things do happen. And um, although not often where I work now, I don't close loans late anymore. I used to close 60% of them late, right? Um, but it is scary because you get out there and you realize that nobody's walking through the door. There are no clients on my couch and it does. nobody cares if I show up or not. I could just take next week off. I could take next month off. Nobody cares, right? Right, and so right. So it really is figuring out the activities that are going to bring you the business and have the most, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. You can keep yourself busy all day long, but it's not necessarily impactful action, right? So yeah. 
And Busy being productive, very being different things. Right. And so I messed around with that for a while and I tried everything. And I'm very much a person where somebody throws an idea out at me and I, I don't mind. I'll just go try it. But, you know, uh, that first year I did, I stumbled around a lot and just wasted time doing things that other people suggested. And it was, it was frustrating. Like, I don't I don't know if this is going to work, but I'll go try it. And then it doesn't work. And you realize mm. you spent a month messing around in the field doing mindless work that doesn't produce any results Um, but it took me a couple it took me a while to figure it out and then you do you start to figure out things that work for you or activities that work and some that are just giant giant time wasters and i also i do think a big piece sorry um i do think a big piece is knowing what your skill set is and what your skill set isn't some activities that i really enjoy other people hate um, right. You have to enjoy what you do. There's a million different things that we can all do to generate business. Some of them are going to be more productive for some people versus others. What were you hating the most about life before we met in terms of the cul-de-sac of frustration, the stress, um, the the struggle and suffering that you were per- perennially steeped in on a daily basis? Because obviously there was a piece of your puzzle that was missing before we met. Tell me right. and everyone listening what the the most painful parts of of that that journey for you was before the light of uh, a breakthrough started to shine in what was the the darkest part of being stuck in that stagnation rut that you were in yeah so um my biggest i think my biggest asset to this business or what i what i'm good at my skill set is you know i in general i have a pretty easygoing personality and i've always been able to Make fr- I mean, I can make friends with anybody, right? So mm-hmm. I can pick up the phone. I don't mind picking up the phone. I don't mind doing the cold calls. I don't mind reaching out to new clients. Um, but the challenge is if you want to take it to that next level, I can't do everything myself, mm-hmm. right? And so I can't, there's no possible way for me to um, manage everything with my fingers on it. You have to get those systems in place. And so I did mess around probably for six to nine months before I um, connected with you was trying to figure out what that means. I feel like it's a tag word in our industry right now, systems. You got to get your systems together. Right, right. Right? Yeah. And so I was messing around with systems, trying to understand what they are and why is this meaning? This just looks like a monthly bill to me, right? But (laughs) um, some of them... Some of them I still don't totally use to their full extent, but some of them, um, once I got into your program, the light bulb came on. Okay, now I get it, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of me literally picking up the phone and calling a list of 100 people, it's fatiguing. That would take me all day long. I could do it. I have the skill set to do it, but do I really want to? No. No, hell no. (laughs) Hell no. Right. And could I, could I call a hundred people this week who actually want to talk to me? Yeah. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And the, the, the finding those, um, realtor relationships, those are great. Do I want to talk to every single realtor out there? No. <laughs> Do I like working with every agent that comes across my desk? I don't. Some of them no. are great. Some of them are not. We're all, you know, just like everything else. Right. But, um, your program helped me really kind of some of those light bulbs came on about Mm -hmm. figuring out which activities i want want to do where to spend my time and where to not spend my time honestly yeah and if i recall correctly and correct me if i'm wrong jess but if i recall correctly from our initial breakthrough call some of the things you're really struggling with is you knew you're capable of more you know, you knew you could be doing three times what you're doing and yet you're spinning your wheels, banging your head against the same proverbial glass ceiling. Yeah. And you're in this frustration mode where, you know, you're capable of more, you know, you can do more, you know, you have the ability to do more and yet you stay stuck in this rut of stagnation and you don't really know how to get out of it. You know, you need support, you know, you need guidance and you're just kind of winging it, throwing yoga to the fan, hoping something sticks. And you had all a matter of motivation and desire to break through, but you just didn't know how to crack the code. Right. And I would say, yeah, actually, so I guess I trailed off on the last bit. You know, it was really that was I know how to do my job. Right. And I know um, 
bas the basic activities, but it was really frustrating because you get to a point where, you know, I mean, the market ebbs and flows and all of a sudden your database goes dry for a little bit or you don't hear anything or realtors take vacations or whatever. And all of a sudden you do get really frustrated because you're not sure where you're going to find your next deal. Mm -hmm. right? You know it's out there. It's not like I'm never going to see another deal again, but you're not sure how to jump in and take action. Right. Mm -hmm. And that does get that does get really fat fatiguing and frustrating because you're you're spinning your wheels a little bit trying to figure out what action can I take right now to make something happen right yes and not really knowing what things can you know what activities are the most fruitful you have an idea but things shift a little bit too right the things that used to work for you just stop working suddenly um for me, I had I just one example. I had a, a lot of business coming from Redfin. I don't know if everybody on here will know what Redfin is, but I was doing a lot of business with um, first time homebuyer seminars and all the Redfin agents. And I was getting a lot of business from there. And then all of a the sudden, they all quit. <laughs> right. So and so then all of a sudden that that piece dries up for you and you go, oh, no, now what am I going to do? I got to reinvent some other new tactic. Right? right. And going and living through that for so many years, it's frustrating. It does start to stress you out and you know you're capable and you know, you know your job and you know how to connect with people, but you're not sure where to find the next the next deal. And that does get exhausting and overwhelming for sure. It causes stress. Yeah. And the income roller coaster, you know, one good month, a few bad months, one good month, a few bad months and being at the effect as opposed to being at the cause. And I call it smoking the hope dope or you're hoping that things will get better and you're trying all these different things. But meanwhile, it's kind of like a Hail Mary and a prayer and it's more wishful thinking than a balanced yeah. and proven plan. And it's more of a passive, like you're, you're making proactive effort, but you're still kind of passively waiting for the phone to ring, hoping something's going to happen versus knowing and taking control and having your hand on the steering wheel and being in the driver's seat in your business with a command and control of the trajectory and direction versus, man, I sure hope this works. Right. right? And, and being able to take it to that next level. I do think there's um, quite literally an income gap or a production gap to where you can never get or ceiling, I'm sorry, to where you can never really get above that yeah. unless you get some of these systems in place mm -hmm. and a lot of them. And the having different sources and, and places to draw business from, not just the realtors I do business with and the database I already have, right? Right. It's what most of us do, to be honest. Yeah. And as the saying goes, if we only do what we've always done, we'll keep getting what, you, what we've always got. And the definition of insanity is we just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. And you didn't, you know, you weren't exactly that picture. You tried a lot of different things because you were, as I would call it, defiantly committed to finding a way. But, you know, you'd been kissing a bunch of frogs before you found the proverbial prince. Tell us about some of the solutions that you tried, you don't have to name names, but basic concepts or ideas that were flawed strategies that just plain didn't work. Tell us about some of those frogs you kissed. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So I have a, I have a mentor that I've worked with for years and she's, she's been in this business forever. Right. And she, one of her big strategies is to go out and do um, show up at open houses. Right. <laughs> Sound familiar, anybody? <laughs> right? And when I, I remember when I first left the bank, she was like, well, just go out to all these open houses and make friends with everybody. And I did. And I got dressed up and I put on my heels and I showed up with goodie bags to all these open houses and brokers opens. And they're all like, great, we'll call you. Right. And it, I don't think and you I were looking you. good. You were looking good, too. And you're <laughs> still getting you were getting the time of day. And you know what? I'm sure that strategy works for someone. I never could make that one work for me, right? I did a lot of it. I spent Sunday afternoons going to bro uh, open houses and left my kids home with a nanny. It just didn't work for me. I'm not mm -hmm. saying it doesn't work. I'm sure I could have got some better coaching on it, but I sure, sure tried. Yeah, right? I haven't seen it work for anyone else either. So you're not alone there. Another one was um, that, you know, I think we spend a lot of time... I, 
all of us still spend a lot of time managing our database. Oh, are you managing your database? Do you have all of these clients set up and all these individual email drop boxes and sending them emails? With cookie you know cutter many, crap. Do you know how many responses that I have gotten from drip marketing campaigns in my email? And I have a large database. Yeah, from the cookie cutter crap uh, campaigns yeah. that your company provides you? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah you I can only imagine. This year? I can only imagine. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And those what? are the two that would have contacted you anyways, because they love you that much. Want, totally. Right. Um, but you know what? I now have reworked my database and I have updated it with some of the things in your program. And I do actively work my database in other ways that do, uh, it does produce results. There is money in my database, but it's not from cookie cutter um, email drip campaigns. I love yeah. email campaigns that my company provides, by the way. I think they're beautiful. They just, they don't make my phone ring. <laughs> it's still cookie cutter crap, even if it's dolled up and beautiful. It's just kind of like a pig. You can stick li lipstick on a pig. It's still going to be a pig at the end of the day. And I think they all have their place, but that's not, if you're sitting there thinking you're going to change your universe by cleaning up your database, it's just not going to happen. You can clean it up, but if you don't crank it with kick-ass content, right. it ain't going to happen, right? Right. That's a tweetable right there. I don't know what I said, but it sounded cool. <laughs> so then we met. Okay. So fast forward, we meet, we meet. What was your biggest motivation? Obviously, you wanted to make more money. You wanted to take your business to the next level. You're sick and tired of being stuck in the mud at the same place. You're done with settling. But tell us about your real driving motivation, why you decided to just say, screw it, let's do it and and launch into my program. Yeah. Um, you know, I without getting too deep and weird, I think I think for me, I've I've had an interesting life. I had a really I had a rough couple of years there with I got a divorce and I had little kids and attorneys and I just was always kind of on the treadmill of making enough money to pay the bills and just Kind of existing and I, I always made enough money to take care of us and we were okay and then um, my life changed and I um, relocated with my new spouse and all of a sudden I really wanted to do more like why mm. am I just sitting here paying the bills there's so many other things that I want to do mm. and for me that really was the start of the journey and I know that sounds crazy and fantasy and fairy tale, but it really was about, there's so many other things I want to do besides pay the bills and go to work and come home and do it again. Survival mode. Yeah. yeah. And I don't, I look back at my self five years ago and I didn't have that. I just didn't have those internal motivators. Mm. Um, but I, but I do now. And in the last couple of years, my whole mindset really shifted and I realized I'm so so I'm capable of so much more than I'm doing right now. And it's not that hard. <laughs> People are out there making crazy money in this mm -hmm. business. Why am I not doing it? I definitely have the talent and skill. I'm not without resources. There's no reason that I shouldn't take this to the next level because I certainly can. Right. And the easy, right. the easiest, quickest way to get to all those places that I want to be in my life and for my family is to just make more money. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's Which not that hard. It's not that hard if you work smart, but if you're doing it the hard way, it is mighty hard and frustrating and stressful and overwhelming and confusing and perplexing. Um, and many people can relate to that, perhaps intimately as they listen or watched this, uh, this conversation. For them, it is hard because they're doing it the hard way and you can relate. You were there. And it is hard. And you yeah. cannot, and again, to that ceiling, there is a ceiling at which you can never get above because you can only take on so much. And the overwhelm and the anxiety for me, I do think that plays a large role in my life of spinning your wheels and producing no results. And I think there is a level you can never get above unless you take it to the next level, which I finally decided. And I was, um, I, I think on the intake call, it was that you wanted how much? <laughs> And I said, you know, I thought about it for a minute, but in the scheme of in the scheme of things, 
I really needed something to get me excited again. And I needed some new ideas because doing all of these random things that other people suggested just hasn't been working. And mm -hmm. so do I want to sit back and just keep doing the same silly stuff and trying things over and over again? I knew there was more out there. And um, so I did. I took the leap and best decision I ever made, really, right? Because I got not just, hey, I know how to now double my production or now I have these new systems that work, but really it kind of did put the fire back in me. Like, mm. yeah, this doesn't have to be overwhelming and stressful. Now I know how to do what I need to do. Yes, clarity, confidence, clarity. competence, all those beautiful C words. And it puts, it also, I mean, it puts a, a vision in your mind of all of those things that you want for your family or want to achieve and the abundance that you want for your life, it puts it within reach, mm. right? It's not just, Hey, a someday, a someday dream. If you get it together, get your act together and do the things, all you got to do is the things that say, you know, and exactly. then you can get there. It works if you work it. Yeah. But the lofty ambition without the proven plan and the daily discipline is just delusional optimism. Right. Yeah, like clicking your heels together and wishing to go to. Go right. To <laughs> Plenty of people believe in Santa Claus, but that's not going to create a dream life, you know. Correct. So you took the plunge. You said, screw it. Let's do it. Let's be real, Jess. What was one of the things that we got you to do that you kind of said, OK, I invested a chunk of dough. I guess I should listen and be coachable. But okay. if you're really honest you gave it a skeptical try. Like, really, is this really gonna work? But after you pulled the trigger and you actually did it and followed through and showed up coachable and committed and did the work, it ended up, ended up being a significant part of your breakthrough. Tell us about that. Well, I have to say before, I, yes, you do have to show up coachable. And one thing I will say about myself is I was in a mindset where I do feel like you run into people in this business who already know everything there is to know about this business, even though they clearly don't, right? And they're not open or coachable to new ideas. They already know it all, right? You can't tell them anything. And right. I was at a point where I had been kind of beaten down with getting so frustrated doing the same old things and not producing the epic results I wanted that I'm no matter what you had told me to do, I probably would have tried it, right? <laughs> And you were all in. I was all in, right? And I do think anybody who's considering joining your program really does have to get their mindset clear first that you're going to try it, not have that skeptical, sarcastic undertone to it. You got to yeah. try it, right? Agreed. Um, so, okay. So the first thing that I... What, okay. One of the first things was the, the leads that come in from Chris, right? Yeah, and Facebook leads. When I started calling those leads, I'm like, I just know. <laughs> <It's not gonna laughs> right? Something yeah. tells me this is just going to be a waste of time. Right? Yeah. And I had never admittedly that zero down loans or first time home, uh, not first time home buyers, obviously, but the zero down credit challenged markets. Those were not something that I had ever really played in. I had always worked in Bellevue and I, you know, jumbo. I'd always had the jumbo market. And, um, you know, so I started getting those leads and I got really confused and frustrated with them at first. And then one day I just picked up the phone. I remember walking into my office and I'm like, I'm just going to call all these people. Why not? Because I do like talking on the phone, right? <laughs> right? Imagine that, people. I know she really needs to work on crawling out of her shell, but yeah. <laughs> she did it. She did it. <laughs> so, and, and, you know, we obviously talk about the automated, um, like the agent legend stuff or the howdy or whatever. Um, and that was that was working and it does get some results. It's better than nothing. But you know what's mm. better than than that? Picking up the phone. <laughs> Novel concept. I know. I pick up the phone and start smiling and dialing. So um, I did it one day and I had decent results. And you know what? This was the strangest piece that came out of it. Every client that I talked to, after we get out, got over the initial, yeah, who are you and why are you calling me? They all just tell you their story and they all mm. really need your help. Mm. And all of a sudden, every five minutes, I'm connecting with a new person who actually needs what I have is information. They don't know how to buy a home. 
They don't know how to fix their credit. They don't know about loan programs or down payment assistance or any of those things. They don't know how the process works. And so for the first time, actually, in my entire career, I'm not just helping millionaires rate shop. Like, I'm actually helping people buy homes. And there right. was something really that clicked for me on that. Um, and it makes the, makes the phone a lot easier to pick up and call, right? Yeah, and what made it work, because believe it or not, there's plenty of people who do the exact same process. They're fed the exact same quality of lead using the exact same strategy, Jess. And they say, this is crap. These people don't have good enough credit. They don't have enough down payment. They don't have enough and income. They and and they all don't. they do is whine, snivel, and complain. And they're the exact same leads you're getting. Yeah. They get zero results. And you get an avalanche of awesome. I took and 12. They, I took 12, I think the number is 12, it's been a while, but I think it was 12 loan applications in one day. And I did it just to be funny one day. I'm like, I'm gonna just do nothing. Like kids, you're having cereal for breakfast and maybe for dinner. And <laughs> right, feed yourselves, I sat figure it out. In my office, in my yoga pants, and I called all day long and I think I took 12 loan applications. That's insane. Do they all close? No, they don't. But I still have all 12 of them and I'm still in touch with them. And eventually they will buy a home. And when they do, I mean, I've got them all in different stages of credit repair. Some of them cannot get their act together, whatever. But you know what? If you look at it from an, a return on investment standpoint, um, just that one piece alone kind of, I mean, it blows you away because then it's not just those 12 applications. There's a lot of power that comes from that is I can produce something without leaving my home. I can do this on, you know, I, I can do it anywhere and I can produce um, leads and I'm generating them myself. So I'm not out begging realtors for them. That's huge. For That's and huge. For me, that was the biggest piece. My, my biggest holdup is I don't love going out begging realtors for business. It's not my thing. I don't love it. Right. Unlike every other mortgage professional, they adore that. That's their favorite part of the business is I, chasing and begging and bribing and kissing oh, ass and groveling. They love that part. Professional, if you really love doing <laughs> it, no, I don't. Anyway. I, You're not alone. The other thing is there's not one real estate agent that I have reached out to and connected with that hasn't, that has said, gosh, I hate it when loan officers call me and give me fully underwritten approval. No, can't you just problem. be parasites and suck it's business from that. me? Why do you have to send business my way? Why don't you just be a leech and suck business from me? Right. Uh. And, <laughs> and that, that has been powerful. Um, I have messed that play up a couple of times where I didn't select the right agent to send the lead to. So mm. I'm going to say I've, I've definitely, yeah. you know, sometimes I don't do the things on the list that you told me to do. And then I learned, uh -huh. the lessons, right? But you learned. I learned. But, you know, um, the leads that for me, that piece was huge. And it took me a month of those leads flowing into my inbox. And before I finally picked up the phone and called them, and it, it did really change my reality. So not only did it now get me leads, I have files going. I don't have to go anywhere to get them. They're here. I can call and give them to agents. Um, and it, there is also a, I don't know, a feeling of satisfaction of being able to help clients that needed the help. Yeah. And this one is the biggest for me. And I don't know if it would be for everyone, but I love the fact that I could do this from anywhere. That is one mm. part of my big why is no matter where I'm at, that phone still, my phone still works. As long as I've yeah. got my laptop and an internet connection, I can call clients get of applications and send them to realtors all day long and i can yeah. do it from anywhere so, you can be rocking loans from your bikini in the in tahiti you can I'm be good. rocking loans from your pajamas in the bahamas you can be rocking loans from every anywhere you freaking want and how awesome that is that to me was the most powerful like life-changing idea ever yes yes and let's be clear you're being very transparent and being very real, which I love about you. <laughs> you just put it all on the table about the fact that not only is all, not all of these loans are gonna close. That's They're just not. the reality, it's a numbers game. But let's talk about what has closed just in a general sense. Um, Cause I know, you know, out of 12 apps you took in one day, certainly some of those did convert. Tell us yeah. about uh, some of the conversions and some of the 
awesomeness that's culminated from you not only taking control of your pipeline by having a proactive, sustainable, consistent, dependable lead generation system that puts you in the driver's seat, but also how that's now uh, cross-pollinated into being able to attract top producing realtors by feeding them business instead of just leeching business from them and uh, how that's started to cycle into other areas of business development for you. Tell us a little bit more about where you're at today after a few months of all of this starting to build momentum. Yeah. Um, so I won't share all of, all of the files, obviously, but sure. one of my favorite ones that I remember kind of it just clicked in my head one day was um, I found this one gal and she was, she was very sweet. I got her, it was one of the first calls I made or maybe one of the first applications I ever took, which is kind of strange. But um, when I called her, it was almost too easy, right? I, I was like, I started talking and I realized there's, a, there's actually a skill to that too, is not saying, Hey, do you want to go fill out my application on my website? Or can I send you some information? It's, let me ask you five more questions and get you underwritten, right? Yeah, and, take the data now, not later. Correct. And I started doing that where I'm taking the applications over the phone instead of waiting for them to fill them out. Um, anyway, this gal, um, she had never owned a home and wanted to and didn't know how. And she goes, I, th I thought I had to have 20% down. No, <laughs> you're never going to save 20% down, right? But um, she had a moderate to low income and, a, you know, a bunch of student loans or whatnot. Um, but when I ran the numbers, I got her approved for a decent amount. It was 300,000 in this area. That's not a lot, but there are some options out there. And I called an agent that I have worked with before, but didn't do a lot of business with. I've worked with him, but it'd been a while. And I said, Hey, I've got this, this buyer and she wants to buy a home for 300,000. You think you can take her out and look for something? Is there anything out there in this area? So he took her out and in one weekend, um, he found, they found something and they wrote it up. And um, so it started the, the dialogue back up with this agent that I hadn't talked to in a while, right? And since then, remember all I did was send him this $300,000 buyer that nobody wanted, right? And mm -hmm. um, since then, he sent me three separate um, leads for listings that he has or other clients that he's run into. He even sent me somebody, some other agents buyers, right? Nice. But I've closed over $2 million in referrals from him off of this $300,000, um, you know, online yeah, referral that right. you sent him. Yeah. yeah. And you know what it is? It's not about, it's not about the $300,000 loan because that didn't, solve anybody's, you know, life ambition, but it's that one. It's having the power of something to give to somebody. And it's about having something to get yourself in front of another agent and show them how committed you are to your business and how smooth the process goes. And it's, right. It's an intro. It's a warm intro. Absolutely. And the same secret sauce that allows you to convert all these so-called bunk leads from Facebook into literally dozens and dozens of apps that a certain percentage are converting into closings mm -hmm. is exactly the secret sauce that allows you to maintain and grow and solidify solid relationships with successful agents. And that's your mindset. That's right. how you show up. You're showing up with a heart commitment to give, not take. You're, you're showing up with an intention to serve, not sell. You're showing up wanting to make a difference for the other, not just take for yourself. And that's one of the reasons why, while other people are whining, sibling and complaining and saying this stuff doesn't work, you're kicking ass, you're taking names, you're chewing bubble gum because of how you show up. And it's interesting sure. that just sending one lead, one buyer to a realtor can be a difference maker in reigniting the relationship and having millions of dollars of additional funded loans come from that one relationship that can literally continue and perpetuate for years to come from one referral right. and literally that's it and one of the reasons why is because number one no one else is doing it think about it who else is sending that agent if referrals? nothing else nobody if nothing else one of the biggest most powerful pieces of that particular play for me is uh, again and 
like you're saying, you talk to loan officers all day. I don't think most of us really enjoy going out and soliciting realtors and begging for business, right? Mm -hmm. And so it really does put a different mindset where, hey, I'm not begging for business. I actually have something to give you. And if nothing else, it gives you the confidence to just go initiate that meeting with the realtor that you've been dying to talk to, but had nothing to offer them. Mm -hmm. And there is also something significant about picking the right realtors. And I yes. spend a lot of time talking that about that. I have given underwritten leads to sometimes the wrong realtors, right? Yes, so we got to vet them first. You do have to vet them first. So For sure. you don't have to have a million applications from those leads. You have to have a few and you have to be very choosy what you do with them. So you've taken back control of your pipeline. You've yeah. got a proactive stream of business that comes in while you sleep that allows you to diversify beyond realtors, beyond your database. You now use those to build stability through diversification. You use them as bait to attract top producing agents to make you their exclusive. We heard just one story of, I'm sure, many of how that's happened through these leads. Tell us a little more about what has happened with your database marketing before we wrap up? What's maybe one or two things that has really lit a fire under your ability to extract more loans from your database since we got working together? Yeah, so um, two things stick out to me. So we were talking about the having your email marketing groups all dialed in. Mm -hmm. Those are great. But when I, when I have all those leads that I can't get a hold of, those Facebook leads, right? And so I think I've got, I don't know, 500 of them now, right? And some of them I've never talked to, but I know they're getting the email, right? And so what I do is I dump them into something really aggressive. I have a hot, it's called a 90-day aggressive buyer email thing, right? And it, I drop the whole list in there, and it literally sends them an email every other day. Nice. And that, that's an aggressive strategy, and most people wouldn't do that, but... My question is why why not? Right? I mean, you have you have received these leads, they they got online themselves, they filled out a form saying, I need help or help me understand this, and you email them aggressively, and I am floored. I have to tell you, I still don't believe it. I still laugh. I show Dawn the thing. I'm like, this person responded after 15 emails. On email 16, he decided to respond. Incredible. It's crazy. So that one is a big strategy. And so every single possible lead that I get from multiple sources now, I just shove them in there. If I can't, they don't want to answer my phone call or they don't want to respond to my text, which is what I do first. Um, they go in there and I, I, I can't even believe how many of them respond after a really long time. Um, the other one is my past clients. You have to be a little bit less aggressive with those, the, the, the agents or the clients that you've worked with before. But you know, there used to be this discussion of, can you dial through your whole database? I mean, I could. I, I, there's a lot of, I have a lot of volume. I can talk all day long, as you can see already, but I don't <laughs> know that I could call 50 to 100 past clients plus do my job every week. And you would almost have to get to that volume to get through your database in a timely fashion, right? And so having the system in place that replicates and it took me a minute to figure that one out too right like i can send a text to you and the next 12 customers and wait for them to respond and they may or they may not or i leave them a voicemail but by the time i call a client leave a voicemail send an email send a text message and then move on to the next it's quite a bit of time that that takes and to have a system where i can just drop them all in and it does it for me mm -hmm. life-changing and just let the cream rise to the top, right? Yes, Scrape right? it off with your spoon. And I I still, I love it. I drop them in in batches of 100 or 50 into my... Um, follow-up system. Follow-up system. And um, I still, like, even if I just get one, hey, I'm so glad you texted. I'm getting ready to sell my house. Great. Let me get a realtor out there right now, right? Nobody ever gets upset about that. Hey, by the way, can you go out and list this guy's house? I sold it to him five years ago. He's ready to move. Nobody ever gets upset. It's crazy. Yeah, imagine that, right? <laughs> so, and, and it also gives you a more effective way because I could say I'm going to dial my database, but we all know I'm not going to, right? right? But this way, I don't have to. 
it sends the same message. We all, I'm going to say the same thing when I call all the people in my database and like, Hey, how's it been? Sorry, I haven't been in touch by the way. Are you looking to buy, you know, whatever. But my system does that for me and it keeps doing it until they respond, which is the most effective way to manage your database. That's beautiful. So we've talked lead generation. We've talked mindset. We've talked adding value, unique value to top producing agents, vetting them out, screening out. So you're rolling with the studs, not the duds, the champs, not the chumps. We talked about systematic approach and monetizing your database and following up with your database of prospects and past clients. It's been a few months now since we you've launched. A lot, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we've covered a lot of ground and it's been a few months since you've launched into my program. And obviously life is quite a bit different now. Tell everyone listening, watching, what's been the most meaningful, life-changing difference now that you're a few months in that for you has been the most valuable, most precious part of taking the leap and investing yourself with this program? Gosh. Um, you know, I think without a doubt, the number one thing that I've gotten out of this is it, it's really being able to control and, and know where my, how to, how to generate my own business. Right. And so instead of feeling nervous, you know what it is? It's the reduction of anxiety. Mm. Right? It's the anxiety has gone away. What do I do now to find my next deal? Where am I going to get these connections? Can I get enough deals to keep it going? Whatever. I don't, I'm not wondering where my next deal is going to come from now. I just need mm -hmm. to do the things, right? That's and beautiful. I feel that in a funny way, right? It's just, you just got to do the things on the list. And some days I don't do the things and I don't get any business and that's my fault, right? But right. if you do the things, just the way it says, you will get the business. And when you can take over control of your life and your career, that's powerful. And that reduces the anxiety. And I think, um, I think I didn't realize how much anxiety I had around that, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. just being frustrated. And it does start to affect your, I don't know, self-esteem or your anxiety or your quality of life. Cause you're constantly worried and you're not sure how to fix this problem. Now I don't, I don't, I have the solution, whether I do it or not, that's up to me, but it's, I know the answer now. I know how to do it. It's certainly yeah. Right. You know where the light switch is. It's up to you. If you're living in the dark, it's not uh, no longer in your control. You can flip that switch anytime you want. You know how to flip the switch on now anytime you want. And if you're in the dark, that's your choice yeah, now. It's not. Right? And, you know, we all make those choices some days, too. And I. Um, I get I get excited about things in my future and I know that I can get there and I know how to get there, too. So it doesn't seem like that they're crazy fairy tale. Like I don't go to, I don't go to work every day and get the same paycheck at the end of the month. If I want to quadruple my income next year, I can just go ahead and do that. What are you most excited about in your life right now? What are you most excited about? Yeah. Um, I think being intentionally vague, I just, for me, I have a lot of ambitions on things I'd like to do that I, I do want to always do mortgages. I don't know why I would never do mortgages, but I, I really am interested in owning some vacation rentals and mm. um, some income properties. And I, I, I'm selling some right now. And actually, um, my husband and I are going to go to Florida next month and look at some look at some vacation rentals, right? Beautiful. It's, it's all happening, right? Beautiful. <laughs> I'm so yeah. stoked for you, Jess. I'm so I'm, happy for you. I've got the I've got all the visions. And I think I'm so excited about where we're where we're going and the ability to get there that now even, even people are starting to believe me. I'm selling the, I'm selling the Kool-Aid. They're taking it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the amazing thing about having your vision, owning the victory in advance, having a proven plan to get you there and then hustling like hell and doing the work is things that people around you consider as maybe delusional optimism, maybe yeah. unrealistic ends up being your reality. And soon enough, they come around and they say, uh, perhaps disingenuous, disingenuously, but they say it nonetheless, Oh, I knew you'd do it all along. I believed yeah. in you all along, but little, <laughs> little, little do you know that they were skeptical all along and it's your certainty, your willingness to do the work, your grit, your hustle, your vision, 
your willingness to own your victory in advance and do the daily disciplines of success every single day that made it real. And so I, as we wrap up, I'm just super proud of you, super uh, honored to be part of your journey and just be a small part of being the catalyst for your breakthrough. And uh, it wouldn't have happened without you showing up coachable, committed, doing the work and keeping your heart and your spirit open to all that we poured into you over the journey that we've had and then taking action on it. You're an action taker you and that's why you're kicking ass. Action. So I would say, and I, you should tell that to everybody who considers joining your program is you, you do have to hustle and you do have to take the action. And some of it is uncomfortable, right? But you, you have nothing to lose either, right? It's just take over your life for a small price and put the hustle in. Totally Absolutely. Right. If you think education is expensive, try ignorance, doing it the hard way, right? Some of us know what that's like intimately. I know I certainly do. So what would you say to someone who's on the fence? Who's like, I've done the core. I've done all these other programs. You know, I've done this. I've done that. I'm super skeptical. I really need to do something because my way ain't working. But, you know, this seems like a good thing. I like what you're saying, but... I'm not convinced. You should not sign up for the program unless they're <laughs> unless they're completely willing to do the things, right? Yeah. You have to do the things always. The things. Yeah. Yeah. And the push-ups don't happen, happen on their own. No, and and you know what? Um, there are some things that I'm not willing to do, but someday when I get there, I'll I'll have to do them, right? And you you have to do all of the things to make you know all of the yeah. ingredients go into the soup and. Um, I think if someone is on the fence about spending the money, I mean, it's an investment, but I think it's more expensive to not do it. And you would know from personal experience, this is not just theory for you. No, you can't afford to not do it unless you, you know, and this year is going to be a strange year, I think, in, in this industry. I think a lot of people will get out of it. And if you're not willing to invest the time and the energy and the money into yourself, um, get out. There's no reason right. to do business, right? Yeah. All in or all out. All don't in or settle. all out. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous if you think about it To, I mean, I don't know what everybody's experience is. I have a college degree. It has literally nothing to do with being a loan officer, right? I've applied no, none of this, right? I'm right and, there with you, sister. Right? I was going to be a PE teacher, so I'm right there with you. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of ridiculous to think that you're going to make all this money in this business and never have to invest any in learning how to do the job. Yeah. Right. Meanwhile, people drop 100K, 150K, 200K on a four year degree or maybe even a six year master's or something beyond that. And all it does is train them to be a replaceable commodity so they can have someone tell them when to go when to come, how much they're worth, how long they can go on vacations with a glass ceiling over their heads their entire freaking career. And they're in debt for decades. And yeah. people sign up for that as the smart way, right? Yeah. And here we are groveling and sniveling and complaining and delaying and procrastinating on a small pittance in comparison to invest in yourself to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, even a month, if you're so ambitious enough to do the work. Yeah, but you got to do the things. You've got to do the work, friends. <laughs> the push-ups don't happen on their own. You right. got to do your push-ups. So that being said, Jess, it's been a pleasure, uh, such a privilege, such a joy, super stoked to be part of your journey and your breakthrough. For those of you listening, watching, if you want to learn more about what really was the catalyst for Jess that ignited her on this path to breakthrough. If you'd like to learn more about the secret sauce that had her double her production in three months, and you're curious to learn more about how you can leverage that for your own business and your own life, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary masterclass we've put together for you. It's a 45 minute masterclass that kind of unpacks exactly what we do. And if you'd like to learn more, you can book a complimentary breakthrough call uh, with one of our consultants or myself, where we can lift up the hood in your business and look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at, where you'd like to be. And if we can help you get there, by all means, we will show you how. And if not, frankly, we'll be the first people to advise you to pass on our services. I promise you. you. Gotta do the thing. Yeah. 
<laughs> but either way, you'll leave the call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll have some fun. So I invite you to go to uh, www.mmc. I, I don't know if it's showing on the screen properly. Let me try that again. Um, I put it in wrong. So let me try this again. It's www.mmcworkshop.com. That stands for Mortgage Marketing Coach workshop.com so go ahead and go there to watch our complimentary master class and if you dig it and you want to learn more and you meet the criteria we specify you can book a complimentary breakthrough call and believe it or not that was the step Jess took just a few months ago that catapulted her to a whole new level of awesomeness peace of mind and breakthrough results so Jess thanks again for hanging with us it's been such a pleasure and thank you for sharing your story no problem all right, guys, thanks for being with us. This has been Jessica Swins Swiston rather, uh, from Bellevue, Washington. And we've been coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. My name is Doran Aldana, the Mortgage Marketing Coach. And again, I invite you to check us out with our complimentary masterclass at mmcworkshop.com if you want, want more information on how we can help you create your breakthrough. Thanks for watching and go forth. Take massive action. Bring massive positive energy to that action. Chances are you will get massive results. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for being with us. Peace. Talk to you soon.